Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Hyman. I'm Chief of Neurodevelopmental and Behavioral Pediatrics at the Golisano Children's Hospital at University of Rochester Medical Center. In 1998, a paper was published in The Lancet which described a case series of children with what was called regressive autism and suggested that not only did they have lymphonodular hyperplasia or enlarged lymph nodes in their intestines, but that these children had onset of their symptoms or recognition of their symptoms of autism around the same time that they received their measles, mumps, rubella or MMR vaccination. So what happened in the ensuing interval is that there became an enormous movement implicating vaccines as a cause of autism. And why is this? Well, part of it is because the symptoms of autism are first recognized in as toddlers in late infancy when language, when language develops, when you see the beginning of social play. And that's right at, at a time that children are getting a series of vaccines. One of the things that we know from other research is that people organize their lives into events, into things like first birthdays, when you've been to the doctor. So it's very easy to use these time periods to remember or to notice when there are differences. So one of the questions has been, what is it that happens in these first 18 months of life that may be associated with the regression you see in about a quarter to a third of children with autism. The epidemiologic studies that have been done do not indicate that the MMR vaccine, given as a single combined entity, is associated with the recognition of symptoms of autism. The initial retraction related to the lack of disclosure of payment one of the things that's really very important in research is for us to believe the research. We have to believe that sub human subjects are treated in ethical fashion, that they gave appropriate consent. We have to believe that the authors um, record correct information, that the information that's being reported is accurate as they know it. We have to believe that appropriate statistics are being done and that information is not being withheld so that the evidence as, as submitted for peer review is as accurate as the investigator knows it to be. And I think that the reason why this has become such an important area to, to discuss is bigger than just MMR and autism even though for parents of children with autism who've been worried all these years, that's plenty big. But it's really for us to trust the literature, that in this day and age, what we need to do is to have evidence-based practice. We need to be using good data to treat people. You know, we live in an age of information. We live in an age where you can turn on your computer and have access to information almost quicker then you can toast a piece of bread. So in this day and age, what I'm hoping is that this is a wake-up call for us to look at the evidence, the evidence behind all of our beliefs. And what I'm hoping is that with this, that there can be a coming together of scientists in the autism community to agree to look at the evidence and to look at the evidence in an open and scientifically appropriate fashion.